Hey everybody, welcome to Draw Sessions. Okay, so to kick this week off, I want to explain what this flyer is that everybody keeps seeing, either in my posts on the community or if I talk about it. So this is my creature design workshop. Now my whole channel is based on designing creatures with the emphasis, well, technically, let me rewind that part. There's an emphasis on designing creatures, but the channel itself is more along the lines of drawing, learning how to draw, learning what to draw, learning how to break things down. But me being a creature designer, that's what the main focus is. So my creature design workshop actually evolved from my drawing mentorship that I had online for several years. I've been doing a mentorship probably for the past five, maybe six years online. And uh, before Discord ever happened, it was more along the lines of posting on social media like you know Instagram, Facebook, so like, hey, I have a mentorship. But anyway, in a nutshell, I want to go over what this workshop actually is because a lot of the stuff that I tell you guys in the videos happens in the workshop, but on a much, not grander scale, but much more in depth. So I'm going to go over the syllabus on how I teach my students. And at the same time, I'll explain real world examples that I have used in studios. Now, some of the stuff is under NDA and obviously I cannot show it to the public, but some of the stuff I can. And when I talk through the syllabus, hopefully that'll help you. All right. So let's take a look at what this is right here on the screen. This is my actual flyer right there. Okay, let's get a better brush for this. Something that's a little bit uh, tighter. Okay, so this is my syllabus. All right, Creature Design Workshop. So it's gonna last four weeks. Okay, we're gonna be designing creatures using examples from everyday, you know, Discovery Channel examples, um, nature channels, and all the animals that are out there. All right, so two live sessions per week. What I do is I hold them at two o'clock PM Eastern Standard Time. I've been teaching for over a decade <laughs> and I have found that with me being on the East Coast, two o'clock PM seems to help most people worldwide. Yes, I get students from China and Russia, you know, even Northern parts of Siberia, Australia and China tends to be the, a little bit more difficult in that they're 12, 13 hours ahead of me. So it's two or 3 a.m. I've had some troopers, okay? And they, they have gone through the workshop waking up at that time. So more power to you guys, those of you that are out there listening that have taken my course. All right, so what it is is uh, two live sessions per week. So on Tuesdays, you get a more work in progress day after I give the assignment. And then between Wednesday and, or between Tuesday and Thursday, okay, so Thursday being the second session of the week. Uh, here, let me write this down here. So Tuesday, 2 p.m. And then Thursday, 2 p.m. Okay, now Thursdays, are important days because then when we go in depth on what we're going to be doing the next week, you have all weekend to work on the next batch of sketches. Now, in my experience teaching for, you know, CGMA online, which is Computer Graphics Master Academy, I also teach a creature design course for that school too. They're, they're an awesome school. I've been with CGMA for seven and a half years, guys. Okay, I started way back in like 2016, I believe. Is it 15? 16, I think. And um, my creature design course is a little similar, but we use, a, we use a different format. So it's a different brief, it's a different syllabus, and it's not eight weeks, it's four weeks. So my mentorship is condensing a lot more, okay? Um, okay, so Thursdays, you get to work all weekend on new sketches. All right, so let's dive into the actual syllabus and what that looks like. Okay, so this is the kind of syllabus that you're gonna get. Now, after I show you my syllabus, I will show you our Discord channel. And then after the Discord channel, I'll explain, 
or I will show you some student examples of what people have done in the past. All right, so week one is the brief. Okay, and I'll, I'll go over the brief here in a second. But uh, you're gonna be gathering animal references and you're gonna be compiling. Now I gave the example of three mood boards, okay, right here. Uh, quadrupeds, bipeds, and winged. Now I've had a lot of students ask me, um, can you do you know, nocturnal, or I'm sorry, subterranean? Can you do marine life? And I'm like, yes. The only reason I'm giving three to start off is because I encourage all skill levels. I have had people that have never drawn anything that were intimidated to take my course. And I've had industry veterans take my course that needed a little bit more of an advanced approach. I encourage everybody because I love explaining and showing real world examples of the whole pipeline. And I've been full circle. I've, I've, I've been a noob, I've been an intermediate, and I've been a senior artist. So I can, I, I think I can help in that aspect. Okay, so what we do is uh, we look at animals that exist on Earth. Because as a creature designer, we want to be able to make up everything in our heads. On the spot. And we, we think that is the ultimate goal. But in reality, that is the farthest from what you actually need to be good at. And that is studying what does exist so that you have the mental library to bend the rules and to then invent things on the fly. Because if, for an example, if you're gonna be sitting at your desk and you don't have a computer or phone next to you and somebody needs a turtle that looks like a beetle but has wings, what are you gonna do? You're going to pull that information from studying turtles and insects and winged creatures from Earth so that you know how the muscles work and the anatomy, etc. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you can pick an animal that interests you from different mood boards. Okay, so, or if you happen to like two animals on one mood board, that's totally fine. And then after you choose two, you will sketch thumbnails. All right, so I, I have you jump right out of the gate. 25 exploration sketches of a creature based on each animal you choose. Now, those of you listening, um, you don't have to take my course to follow this syllabus if you want. If, if you're doing a personal project and you want to do it on your own and just kind of dabble in it whenever you can, heck, take this okay, as a, as a starting point, as a base point because I know how hard it is to actually start your own project. It's not easy. And when you're all by yourself, there's the lack of discipline, there's uh, distractions, etc. And hey, we're all distracted. Anyway, 25 exploration sketches of a creature based on each animal you choose or chose. 50 thumbnails total, all right? So make sure to number each sketch. And that is also something, it's, it's a little detail that goes a long way in your portfolios and for a client if you're doing freelance work. When you take the time to edit your own work before sending it in, and it's something as simple as call outs, if there's an action, if there's a functional feature, and especially how many there are. If there's 70 sketches on a page, it's much easier if you number them, okay? Week number two. From those thumbnails, you're gonna choose two that intrigue you the most, okay? You're gonna take those two and clean them up. Spend significantly more time on a newer version. So I give a minimum of 30 minutes each. If you spend 30 minutes of uninterrupted sketch time, you're going to have a pretty decent start on a drawing. Depending on how fast you are and how skilled you are and how good you become over time, you can start putting in a little bit more details. And what I mean by details is, hey, does your creature have scales, fur, hair, wrinkles? Is it new? Uh, you know, are there spikes, tentacles, etc. cetera. Um, okay, so you're going to be sketching a front and rear view of each cleaned up version. So that's gonna be four sketches total. And then when we move on to week three, from those two creatures, you will make a final decision with one and take it to the next level. This is very important 
because this is when you flesh out what they are, their environment, speed, colors, etc. And the deliverables that I give are as follows. And this is right up here. Functional feature. Okay, your animal has to have at least one functional feature. Think about the animals that exist right now. What is one function that cats have? Retractable claws, so they can climb and they can attack, especially the big cats. All right, think about a beetle, like a stag beetle. It's pinchers, that is a functional feature, okay? Muscle anatomy, we're gonna be looking a lot at that. Okay, you're gonna find an animal that influence the design of the creature that you're drawing and study the actual muscles and skeletal anatomy of that. Okay, you can look at taxidermy, you can look at prehistoric animals because a lot of paleontologists and have over the years refined the anatomy of well-known prehistoric animals such as you know dinosaurs, smilodons, aka saber-toothed tigers, um, you know, platybelodon, whatever you want to look at. Make sketches of the bones and muscles from both the existing animal and your creature, and then you're going to be focusing on the head design. How many times have you heard me say that, guys, in my, my previous videos on my channel? I, I'm sprinkling all my videos with these because they all come from my course. Okay. Now we're bringing everything together. We will compile all of the hard work you've done into one presentation board. And the deliverables for the presentation board are as follows. Several thumbnails. Now, as the course goes on, you're going to be scribbling. You're going to have ugly drawings. You're going to have nice drawings. I personally don't think any thumbnail is ugly. It's beautiful because it's needed in order to get to a final design. So the next time you are trying to invent something and it just sucks, you think it sucks, just tell yourself, you know what? If I don't get this scribble out, then it's not going to dictate some cooler shapes that are going to come afterwards. Because then what we do is we refine the sketches. We're going to have muscle and bone sketches, functional feature or features. It's always cooler to have a creature that has multiple functions. You're going to do a head close up. Okay, so you're going to spend a lot of time on the head. And I stress this a lot when I'm sketching. Notice how throughout most of my videos where I'm teaching about freelance and I'm teaching about the industry, uh, all of those um, line drawings I do of creatures while I'm speaking, I put most of the detail in the head and especially around the eyes. Okay, that's where a lot of the personality is. And then we're gonna do a, a fun part that not a lot of people actually think of, and that is what the creature's name is. Habitat, diet, height, and weight. And I stress to my students, and I'm stressing to all of you listening, if you're serious about creature design, take a notepad, not your phone with your notepad app, not your keyboard, take a notepad with a pen and write down, go old school, write down what you want your creature to be about. What planet does it live on? What's the planet like? What biome, okay? Is it desert? Is it jungle? Is it wasteland? Is it Arctic? Um, when you start fleshing out all of these, it's like laying the foundation for a house. The better the foundation, the better the outcome. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a final front view and a rear view, okay? So the front view in the design world is better known as the money shot, all right? So each portfolio has a different angle for a money shot. Now I like to focus on front three-quarter view and then when you turn the creature around to show the back view, it's the rear three-quarter. Typically, the front three-quarter is the one that gets the most love and the most attention because that is the selling point. You can see the front of it, you can see the face, you can see the stance, and it's a lot of fun, okay? So, let me show you what our Discord actually looks like. All right, now, I made a new channel for our Discord uh, with a text channel within it, and it's uh, Final Presentations. Okay, so when we, when we look at stuff like this, you know, this is uh, one of our past students. She did an amazing job, really, really nice job. Um, so if I can, no, I can't. But this creature went through a lot of iterations, so you can see the type of work that you all are gonna be capable of and this is what we stress in the course, okay? We got thumbnails here in the upper right, functional features, we got nice call outs, we got a, a really awesome front three quarter view that is an action pose. Also, we have a front front, or excuse me, front three quarter view of just a static pose. We got the side view with the little human to show scale. 
she shows muscle and then she shows bone and then she gives a description here. So this is a good portfolio page. This is what you should be striving for. All right, and just to show some more. Okay, so this is uh, Nadia. She was also an awesome student. Um, so we have the Capricornil. Okay, this is another really cool one. Now we went through a lot of iterations on this and we were wondering, you know, like how are we gonna make these back fins really cool and still be functional? So you can see that without going into an incredibly ridiculous amount of detail with the muscles, the more energy you put into the muscular structure and the skeletal structure underneath your creature, the more realistic it's gonna be on the outside when you start layering in the, the skin, the fur, the fat, the wrinkles, um, scales, and whatever else is, might be growing, barnacles for all we know, you know, on the, on the creature's surface. Okay, and then, um, you know, so some other examples too, like Alex Cox, he did a great job with his. We, we had a lot of talk about how to make this creature be able to fly, but also have a really cool mouth. And I think one of the great things that Alex did is that he cleaned up the head version. Okay, so the head is one of the first detailed parts that he did for his creature. And what that did is that he gave it a, a nice flight sketch here and then we see the wings and everything. He went through a lot of trouble to make sure that it looked realistic. So Alex, if you're watching this, great job again. All right, um, over here is the actual Discord. So my workshop Discord is forever growing. I've been, there was a break that I took over a year about having the workshop, you know, because life, jobs, you know, children, etc. But um, it's starting to grow again. So in sketching demos, this is where I post all of the recorded sessions. And you can see how many we've done. And we can go way, 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 way back here. All right. Um, and then we have the, the general room here where people can just chat. You know, that's most discords have general rooms. We got student work. So student work, uh, you can see some sketches being posted here where people, uh, yeah, really good job where people tend to, you know, put their thumbnail sketches, etc. like really, really good stuff. Um, some sketch overs, some paint overs. And we also have, I mean, the more students that join, the more they are able to give their two cents. And like I said, we have some industry veterans in here too, so they can give some really good pointers. All right, so we keep scrolling up here and there's, there's all kinds of different sketches, you know, like this one, this is a really good one where uh, Charlin was trying to figure out the rear three-quarter view and to get the anatomy by drawing through the creature. Okay, so you can see here that not everything is colored either. All right, so we keep going up here. This is good. This is another colorway. So that's nice. Um, oh yeah, we have some other examples. This is a great example. This is, I, I believe this is before she had a, a more colored version of the sketch over here. But this is a really good action pose. Here's a good front three quarter, rear three quarter, some good headshot design, some very, very, some of the first um, thumbnail sketches up there. So those are awesome too. And then we have an animal reference channel where if anybody sees anything that is inspirational when it comes to animals, I mean, we, look at this, we got fish, we got mood boards. Check these out. These are really good mood boards and these are things that you're going to be making. Okay, it just, Animals that intrigue you. Okay, we have a Quetzalcoatlus up here. We got a praying mantis. We got a vampire bat. I mean, all these really cool things. All right, so just people just keep posting really cool pics of animals and then you use your influence. Um, and then creature concept art. So these are portfolios and other projects from industry. Okay, so these are, these are actually used in games. Like this is wonderful. That's really, really cool. And this is uh, stuff that's forever inspirational. We just keep looking through this and looking through this. All right, and then we have personal work. So anything that you're personally working on that maybe you need some pointers on, uh, feel free to post it in here. So we have a lot of cool sketches. And also, I encourage 3D artists who maybe feel like they can't draw well to post in here also, because while we're all learning together, um, 3D and 2D go hand in hand. If you can do both, that's awesome, okay? If you're good at one but not the other, 
then there's a lot of back and forth that happens. A lot of maybe, you know, unsolicited tutorials and, and paint overs and such. It's, it's really, really good. And so you can see up here that people are just posting their personal work. Like this is nice. Um, we had a student that was featured in Imagine FX. So really, really cool stuff. Okay, and then I went over sketching demos, artist inspiration. Okay, it's kind of like the same thing, but these are particularly for presentations and things that look really, really good. Okay, so if you want to get hired, if you want to get noticed, um, the inspiration channel is specifically to make your stuff sing. That's what I like to say. If it sings to you, then that's great. Um, and then here's a, it's a new, new channel that I made for the Creature Design Workshop, and that is portfolio questions. So anytime somebody has a question specifically about portfolios, like how should I look for work? How many pieces should I have? Uh, how do I know if one's good, and et cetera? This is where they're all answered. And of course we have final presentations. Okay, so this is a, a newer one, and more people are gonna start posting these on the fourth week. Now, when it comes to um, when my workshop actually is, I start this when a new month begins. So it, you know, sometimes Tuesdays and Thursdays fall the like later in the week or the week after a month starts. Okay. So for example, you know, I'm looking at September. So we have one more session on Thursday and then October's is going to start the third. And then we're going to have the second session of week one on the fifth. And it just keeps going. It's a rolling basis. So those of you that are interested in signing up for this, um, it, it really just depends on the time that you actually want to sign up. I typically don't have people sign up for the current month if it is after the first week. Okay, so for example, this is September. If you were to sign up on the 11th on, then you would just take the October session, vice versa, okay? Now I allow people to sign up um, you know, all through the first week to take the current month. This this gives people time and it also, I'm trying to build trust with people to let you know that I'm having this every month so you can look forward to it in months down the line. Or if you wanna you know, hurry up and jump right in, then hey, more power to you. I'm gonna give a link to uh, the workshop in the description, but also if you if you look at my bio on my YouTube channel, I have a, a direct link there as well, okay? It's just creaturedesignworkshop.com and it's easy to find. You can view it and sign up in mobile and also desktop. Um, okay, so that's my Creature Design Workshop, guys. Now, if you wanna see some samples of, of some of the stuff that you might do, you know, this is something that I've done for a real client, okay? And it's probably something that I haven't really shown on my channel. I can't remember if I have or not. This is Frank. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I did this for a company and I have uh, functional features. So the way the mouth opens is right here. It's typical of a snake. So this creature can swallow a human whole. This is a top view of it. So we understand how it actually functions. I have um, some orthographic views here. Okay. This is the scale. So I just showed it. So I just took this and blew it up and there you have it. Now, could I add more to this? Of course, but I also have to follow with what the art director needs too. We have some colorways down here and then um, a less detailed action shot, but also this is an evolutionary sketch of what it ended up being. Okay, so this is technically the money shot. Um, thanks again for listening, guys. I, I love this workshop. If you're interested in joining, again, um, the link is in the description, but also you can find it at creaturedesignworkshop.com. There's also a link in my channel's intro. I, I believe there's a, a hot link directly on my banner, if I believe. Um, thanks again. If you have any questions, just you know, post them in the comments below. And you know, I, I think this is going to be a pinned video because uh, this is something that I've been wanting to make for a little while now, but I've been kind of preoccupied with getting everything else out. Got a lot more cool stuff planned. Thanks again, and I'll see everybody later.